Give me the. Th good morning, everyone. How are you? It is so good to be here today. We're grateful the Lord has allowed us opportunity to stand in the sanctuary once more and teach the word of God. It is a privilege to be able to come before you and share the word of God. We want to welcome you this morning. We pray that you would go and grab someone out of the bedroom, the bathroom, wherever they may be. This is one of the most important lessons that we will ever teach, especially in this season. We are talking about being committed to the church. And even in this season where pandemic is running rampant, we know that businesses and schools and churches have began to function differently. So we have to adjust our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Amen? Why don't you have a word of prayer with us? And we want to tell you good morning. If no one has told you that they love you, I love you. Have you told Jesus that you love him this morning? Tell Jesus that you love him this morning. He wants to hear that from you. We're going to pray today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, your peace and your power. Breath right now and just rest in your peace. We exhale and say thank you. We stop the rush, Lord God. We rebuke the distraction. So now we thank you for traveling grace and mercy. We thank you for last night's sleep, Lord. Our family circle is still unbroken. Lord, a fire did not break out in our home, nor a burglar broke in. So right now we come to say thank you. So Lord, we love you today for your word. We love you for all that are in the sanctuary today. We pray a special blessing upon all of those that are watching as well as listening. And we pray for their families that are represented as well. So on that, we're forever grateful. We love you, Lord God. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in your own house in the sanctuary? Just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Give him glory. Give him honor. It is so important what we're about to teach this morning because even as I've just shared, you know, that, that, that saying that I do, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, is usually done in the sanctuary. So we could see who's clapping and who's not, which goes to show you that the church is bigger than the building. I'm going to say that one more time. Many people have a false sense of what church is. The church is bigger than the building. This is the edifice. Eddie means to build. It means a structure. It means to build. But we are talking about the church that lies and rests in your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Because if we were to say be committed to the church, how committed could you say you have been since March 15th? How, how can you say, if this was it, guys, and, and don't adjust your sets. Yep, I have on a hoodie and some jeans. It's youth Sunday. We're dressing down, and I'm feeling relaxed. It's going to have to be dressed down Sunday more than once a month. I love it. Praise the Lord. But how committed to the church have you been since March 15th? And I say March 15th. That was the last Sunday that we had church in a sense of normalcy until they shut everything down and been opening up and closing lately. So we're going to talk about that this morning. The question that I want you to ponder is, what are your first memories of the church? What are your first memories of the church? Myself, I was reared in church. I, I've shared with you, my father pastored uh, my entire life. And so uh, uh, when I came into the world, uh, you can bet, I was in church as soon as uh, my mother could get there. And so I've had memories of church all my life. Uh, since I was a baby, I can remember uh, being in church and, and driving to church uh, with my family. But what is your first memory of church? Now, many of us have come into a relationship with Jesus Christ in our latter years. So your remembrance, first memory of church will be uh, much more different than mine. You came in with 
already a taste of the world. I'm going to say that like that. Amen. A taste of the world. So it, 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 some of you even had a Damascus Road experience. You know, and I've shared with you that uh, I don't, in a sense, just envy, envy it. But but I, I, I kind of share with others when they tell me that, that I think oftentimes that I take for granted what they have experienced since it was such a shift in their life. You know, I grew up in the church, and so the right and the wrong was 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 nailed in me in, in the home. But, you know, we didn't have a lot of choices to go out and party. Uh, if you were staying under my mom and dad's roof, that was not the case. You you didn't talk back and, and all of these things. But many of you came into the church as adults. What was your first memory? Because in order for you to be saved, it had to be a, a great memory if you came to Christ. Now, many of you may not have come at the first uh, uh, memory of, your, uh, of coming to church, but it had to be such a greater revelation, watch this now, than I experienced in my childhood. I was baptized at eight years old, didn't really know what it meant. I just knew that if I was in the house, that I needed to be saved and I needed to be baptized. My dad baptized me, but I really didn't understand it like I understand it now. So we are forever grateful for those experiences. So your first memory of the church. Why don't you think about that today? We're going to read our scripture all the way through. I don't want to leave any of the scripture out today. We're going to go from Romans 12, starting with verse 3. And I think it goes all the way into verse 16. So we're going to read that all the way through. The word of God says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has only has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. I just want to share with you that we have the faith of God. All of us have the same portion of faith, same portion of grace. No, someone doesn't have more faith than you. God has given us all the same measure of faith. It's how are you exercising your faith. Let's go on to verse six. We have different gifts <clears throat> according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Many of you didn't even know that was a gift. It's a gift to be able to encourage others. It's a gift to show mercy. It says, if it is giving, then give generously. Giving generously is a gift. Second Corinthians 9 says that he wants you to be a cheerful giver. We got a lot of givers, but are you cheerful when you give? Or are you giving out of compulsion? And the Bible says that you should not give out of compulsion, out of a sense of obligation uh, on the negative end of that. But you should give generously and you should give cheerfully. Then there's the gift to lead. And if you have the gift to lead, do it diligently. It says, if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Did you know that showing mercy is a gift? Hallelujah. Many of us are caught up in some of the things that are taking place in church. And it is, yes, it is the prophesying and it's the fivefold, the apostles, the preachers and the teachers and, and things of the evangelists and things of that nature. Then you have choir members and you have media people and you have ushers, but you know the greatest gift, one of the greatest gifts is showing mercy to people. That's a gift. Many of us need to explore that gift. Amen. You have a gift to lead. Stop sitting on your gift. <laughs> we, we need teachers, youth Sunday school, children. Yeah, the church is not open in the way that we once know it, but be prepared because ladies and gentlemen, and, and the Lord is wearing on my heart this morning, church is not always going to be this way. Will you be better when you return? If you return, I meant to say that. 
Will you be better when you return or if you return? Sad to say, many people won't return to the church. They're going to say, I've been doing good without it. For the, and, and I know it'll, it'll probably in March, I feel the Lord to share with me, in March things are going to just turn around. It ain't going to go back to the normal. It's going to be better than normal in the church, especially in greater friendship. It'll be a better spirit in the church. Uh, it'll be new people in the church. Amen. And I'm going to share about that when I preach today about, you know, don't feel condemned about not being here. Don't feel condemned. The Holy Spirit convicts you. And so we'll, we'll see how that works out. So we're going to go to our next verse. Go to verse 9. I told you I wanted to read all the scriptures. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Watch this now. Honor one another above yourselves. And you know what? That spirit definitely dwells within greater friendship. We have so many individuals that are always going out their way for others. I see it all the time. And we have a, 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 a congregation that gives generously uh, to others and humble themselves before others. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. I can't say that enough. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. That don't even sound right, do it? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That means people that come against you, you should bless them. How many people pray for their enemies at night? How many people, no, listen, because I do, I do. I pray for people that come against me. I used to get mad. I used to get angry. And now I say, Lord, bless them. You know, I don't know what they're going through. Uh, usually people, when they're mad, they're not mad at you. They're mad at some other circumstance that's happened in their life. The problem is usually not you. You may have said something or did something, but there's a root cause of that anger. And it's usually not the person in front of them. It's a spirit of anger. Amen. Hallelujah. Get to the root of the problem. But you should bless those. Man, I know people talk about me, and, and, and that's fine. They talked about Jesus. But you know what? Some I know doing it, some I don't know. But you know what? I bless them anyway. I bless them. I don't curse them. I don't get mad like I used to and all this and that, and I hope this happens to them. I say, Lord, bless them because you know what? They just need to mature. They just need to grow in you. And we don't know why people act the way that they do. But don't you just get uptight because somebody's not treating you that well. Matter of fact, it's a badge of honor when people treat you bad when you're doing good. The Bible says it. That when you suffer for him for doing good, it's a good thing. So don't worry about what's taking place, who's talking about you, what's going on. You keep your eye on the cross. Hallelujah. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. That's very good to know, huh? Because in Anchorage, we see a lot of homeless people. Matter of fact, the homeless guy came uh, here yesterday. He comes, one came last Sunday. But you know what? We treat them with love and respect. We don't dog them. We don't act like we're better because you know what? <laughs> Many of us are a paycheck away of being homeless our own self. Who do you know that they say 75% of our nation is one paycheck away from being homeless? Can't pay your rent or your mortgage. So you may think that you're better, but it takes one little shift. <laughs> Let me tell you, one little accident to make you appreciate other folk. Amen. So begin to be humble. 
began to be loving and kind. So that's our verses. I'm going to read this first page. This first page is dynamic. Now go back to 98. I wanted to get through that scripture so that we would make sure we had time for the word of God. So let's go to page 98 and we're going to get in and we're going to touch some points on this lesson. It says commitment to Christ includes a commitment to his body, the church. So now we see that the church is the body of Christ. And we are members of that body. Some of you may be a thumb. Some of you may be an index finger. Some of you may be an eye. Some may be an ear. But we are all necessary. No part of the body is greater than the other. I know many people may not think this and you don't think about it much. But your thumb is important. One time I had a blister on my thumb and, and uh, I was biting my fingernail, you know, which is, I've been discouraged to do that now. But it just swole up. It got infected because I bit down too far. My thumb was like two of my thumbs. And man, I could blow on it and it would hurt. I couldn't butt, butt my shirt. And I didn't pay a lot of attention to my thumb until my thumb got hurt. I couldn't tie my shoes. I was trying to tie my shoes with these fingers. But I realized, even though I don't say thank you, Lord, for my thumb, I see how important my thumb is. Have you ever tried to open up without your thumb? You're trying to grab it with two fingers. Then you accidentally hit it on there. And you, ah! The thumb is important. Every part of your body is important. Every member of the church is important. Ladies and gentlemen, be not discouraged. You, oh, I don't have a gift. You do have a gift. If you are part of the body of Christ, you have a job to do. You are obligated to the body. Every essence of your body, your, every member of your body has a specific obligation to the body. It has a responsibility. So, how have you been committed to the church since the church is closed? Ministries are somewhat just kind of moving in a slow pace, kind of a, a pace where we're stepping back from the physical aspect of it. But how are you committed to the church now? Now, let's read Bible meets life because you know what? We can hem and haw about people coming to church, this, that, and the other. And you know what the Lord showed me today? Michael, it is about how much do they love me? How much do you love Jesus? How much do you love the church, the body of Christ? And it all comes back to Jesus. Jesus is the reason why we are doing what we do. And so let's read the Bible meets life. This is so very important. Now, this is going to going to going to catch a lot of people. It says any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Many of us have used that time worn phrase. But as we get to know a friend's friend, we may change our tune. <laughs> How many people got friends, but you don't like some of the friends they got just because you like them. Don't mean you like their friends. It's very important. Just because we have something in common with the friend doesn't mean we have anything in common with his other friends. Check this out. Friendships are one thing, but it's a whole different matter with those we love. It all comes down to love. Everything we do comes down to how much we love something or someone Amen. It's all about love, whether you want to admit it or not. If someone said to me, watch this now, I love you, but I can't stand your wife, I would be devastated. My wife is a part of me, and someone can't truly love me without also loving my wife. Amen. And that's the God's honest truth. When we, and that's the same thing in the church. When we become one body, amen, watch this now, especially in one in a marriage, you know, you become one. You cannot say you love the husband, don't love the wife, that you love the wife, don't love the husband. I've been on both sides of that. Well, some people love my wife, but they don't really care for me. Some people love me, but they don't really care for my wife. You know what? That ain't love. That's infatuation. That's all it is. 
Because to truly love me, you got to understand who I really am and what I really love and who I really love is vital to me. You cannot love part of somebody. And it's the same thing with the church. It, watch what he says here. We hear a similar statement in our culture. Watch what he says here. I've heard this a lot. I almost said a million times. I don't know. It's been a million. We have a similar statement in our culture. And this is, listen, this is where we are. You, you would have thought that this writer of this Sunday school lesson knew COVID-19 was coming. This is how awesome the word of God is. His word is never out of season. It says, I love Jesus, but I don't love the church. How can you do that? And listen, guys, don't get upset because it's just immaturity. And I say that with all graciousness. You just have not grown and you have not really received the revelation of the love of Jesus Christ in your life. And it's, it's about a growing process. It takes growth. It takes time to grow into that. It says maybe they've been hurt by people in the church or they found commitment to the church is too demanding or difficult. Did you hear that? It says that they found commitment to the church is too demanding or difficult. So what are you saying? You're saying that the author saying that if you're not committed to the church, now this is your, your local church where you are active in that church, whether you're just coming or you're part of a ministry, how can you say you love Jesus and not love the church? And listen, it, 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 he's just said that the church is the bride of Christ. Whatever the reason this sentiment is far from the heart of God. When you say that you love Jesus, but you don't love the church. Amen. You, you can tell who really comes to church for a worship experience and a word because they're more attentive. You know, even now with all the electronics you got, you, people are on their phones in church. You know, that's why the Zoom meetings and the teleconference meetings, that's why I can hardly wait till we get back to what we're doing because you know what? There's not a lot of commitment on those meetings. <laughs> They're not. I was on one yesterday and I had my screen blocked because I was in my night, my, my pajama stuff. It was early in the morning. I had my long john shirt on. I didn't feel like people seeing me. But you know, that wasn't really a cool thing to do, but it's just those things until we come together face to face. It's hard to be committed to someone when you are not in their presence. Oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. You can say what you want. It's hard to be committed to people. It's hard to be a real part of meetings when you're not face to face. Teleconferences. You don't know what people are doing on a teleconference. They could be digging in their nose, looking at this. They ain't listening to you. I know I've been on one. I was on one yesterday. People barely respond. And that's what the devil wants. The devil wants to keep us separated. And many people are good with that, but it just shows your commitment. Hey, man, I know I'm saying this thing this morning. It's about being committed. If you're going to be committed to something, it's Jesus. We're talking about Jesus here. Are you going to be committed to Jesus? We are to love that which Christ loves, and that includes his bride, the church. And as we're talking about being committed to the church, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about the people. When I come here, on Sunday, yes, sometimes I drag. I get in the shower and I boost myself up. I get on my knees, pray in tongues, and Lord, I need to get through this. And I sometimes feel bad about it because I'm like, Lord, why is it hard for me to go to the church and you died for the church? I know I'm not the only one. And it does not matter because big churches all over the world with great preachers and pastors that are on television and all on radio, whatever the case, they have the same problem as well. But is our commitment to Christ what it should be? I'm going to go through a couple of points 
because we've read the scriptures and you need to think about that. Are you loving like Christ loved? Yes. Whether it be your family members, your church members, your co-workers. And, and, and like I said, the Bible says many people will persecute you. They will curse you. But you know what we have to do? We have to pray for them. We have to continue to encourage them. It says, regardless of our view of the church, if we're connected to Christ as his followers, we are connected to the church. Because in Christ, we form one body. So it says that we need to become inseparable. So even now in this time, and we're just going to hit some points in here. We want to share with you today the commitment that we must make to Jesus. Let's, let's, let's just take uh, the church word out. Let's just leave it at Jesus because Jesus is the church. He's in us. So now in this day and time of COVID-19, how much commitment are you making to Jesus Christ? Because ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter about who's preaching, who's singing, who's teaching, who's doing this, that, and the other. It's about how much of a commitment are you making to Jesus? How much do you love him? We say we love him. And ladies and gentlemen, I do understand that many people are being separated right now. And, and we just had our election where, you know, the thing they talked about is division, disunity. And now the election is over now. So now where's your spirit? Now you don't got that fight anymore. So a lot of y'all schedules opened up a lot because now you ain't going to be looking at the news. It's over. Now, now listen, because I'm going to keep on right through this. Now that Biden's in office, what in your life has changed? When you woke up this morning, oh, I'm going to say it like I say it. When you woke up this morning, what was changed about your life? I know people dancing in the streets and hey, hallelujah, but after the thrill is gone, you still have Jesus. Are you jumping for joy every morning that you have Jesus in your life? That you're committed to him, that you woke up this morning and you know what? You could dress your own self. Biden ain't got nothing to do with my house. I hear y'all. I feel you. My king is Jesus. I trust God. I, I, Vice President Harris, God bless him. Yes, we did need a change, you know, but, you know, are we going to become united only because Biden is in office? We should be united because Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We should love. Is Biden getting elected going to make you love more? Did he, did, listen, when you woke up this morning, you said, oh, yay, Biden's in office. I'm going to church. Many of you didn't do that. Man, oh, Biden's in. Oh, Jesus, I just love you more because Biden is in office. Many of you didn't do that. Jesus is our source. And so we must understand today that we as a body of Christ, we need the church. We need the church. We are members of the body of Christ. And let me tell you something, and I'm sharing it with you. If you stay out of the edifice, the building, the sanctuary, and we're allowing people in, uh, you got to call and get on online. But you can see the love that's shown in the church. We are blessed. When you come to the church, people are being blessed. People are being encouraged. And many of us, I know, listen, I, I'm sharing with you because I'm, I'm right in that boat with you that there are times when you get discouraged. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not the time to get discouraged. Yes, it's winter, it's snow, it's COVID, but you got to stand strong and fight for your joy. Rebuke the spirit of discouragement. That's why the church is so important. You come into the sanctuary. You are able to feed off the love of others. You are able to show commitment to Christ and his church. And let me tell you, some people are getting along really well without that. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, you're going to need Jesus. And you're going to wonder, why is Jesus not doing this? And, and, and the question is, why is your commitment lacking in him? 
He's like, to many of, of us, Jesus is like a cosmic errand boy. We rub a lamp and, oh, he's here and we can do this. And, and, but you know what? You need to realize that Jesus is a part of your life every day. And the church is the one that shares that love through its participants. Go to page 100. It says, at, this is only possible because we are in Christ. The world looks at diversity and creates divisions. And unfortunately, believers have often bought into those divisions. Same thing they were saying that, you know, today it's about 20 some odd churches that are going to be represented. All of us as pastors, we have been in this race, reconciliation, and justice symposium for the last two or three months. We meet every Monday. Uh, we've been meeting at different areas, and it's white and black pastors. Today, November 8th, every pastor is preaching one voice, one message as our theme. And it's about unity in the body of Christ. It's about unity in the churches. And we're going to close soon. I told my wife that we would be done around 10 because they got to do some things with the children. But let me share these last couple of points with you. We have to be united as the body of Christ. We have to consider the love of Jesus Christ. It says we need one another to grow, flourish, and become everything God has called us to be. Other believers help and support us. Us. We often refer to these gifts as spiritual gifts. When we are saved, each one of us, each member of the body of Christ is given a unique gifting that we are to use for the purpose of helping the body of Christ, the church. So I'm sharing with you today. That you have a gift in you. Ask the Lord what your gift is. Many of it is, is what you do every day. And you're saying, well, the church is closed now. I'm not able to use it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sharing with you. Prepare yourself for the next season. It may be, you may not be back until March or February or whatever. But as you're coming, prepare yourself. Ask the Lord to reveal your spiritual gift. So that you can be a part of the body of Christ. And I say this once more. Please do not forsake the assembling of yourselves. And you guys that many of you are, are, are I know the immune systems are bad. But begin to pray and ask the Lord. Ask him. Lord, when should I return? When is it going to be comfortable for me to be committed to the body of Christ, the church? And ladies and gentlemen, it is so awesome that when we see you, we also meet the needs that may be in your life when you come and share those with us. Because when you're separated from the church, we don't oftentimes know what you're going through. So our deacons and our diaconate, our deacon and deaconesses, they're reaching out every month to share with you. But please let us know what you need. So be humble toward one another. Begin to bless those who persecute you. I want to read this last statement. And if you don't hear anything else and share this with others, I know some of you are coming into the sanctuary and some of those that are not, whether it be some spouses are coming and some are not, but share this saying with Dwight L. Moody, one of the greatest writers, preachers, teachers ever, 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 ever. I like that. Dwight L. Moody. He says, church attendance is as vital to a disciple as a transfusion of rich, healthy blood to a sick man. Can I read it again? This is how important church attendance is. And it's how much do you love Jesus, guys? I'm telling you. You have to question your own self. Lord, why am I not? participating in the essence of church church attendance is as vital to a disciple so the question is are you a disciple and i'm telling you we got a lot of baby christians in order to be a disciple you must sit under the word of god whether it be sunday school bible class your personal time preaching teaching whatever it is but are you a disciple if you're a disciple, you are longing, listen at this, you are longing to get back into the sanctuary. 
You're longing for it. Amen. And you can question yourself on that. Church attendance is as vital to a disciple as a transfusion of rich, healthy blood to a sick man. We need the church. And so what is the church? The church is you, me, Reverend Rogers, Brother Malachi, Brother Dante, Brother Mari, the media team. We're the church, our deacons and our dad, all of those. We are the church. But you know what? Our minds and hearts should be driven by the love of Jesus Christ. So my question to you this morning is, how much do you love Jesus? Many of us talk a good game, but are you, I know this lesson was tough, wasn't it? But let me tell you, it's the truth. I've not made it up. It's in the book. You have a gift. Bring your gift into the sanctuary so that we can open it and all of us can celebrate. Amen. We thank God for you this morning. We thank God for all of you that have joined us. It is a blessed time to be in the name of the Lord. We're going to have a couple of baptisms this morning. Our children are going to be dancing and singing for us. We want you to be encouraged. Why don't you share with someone? Get online and share with us the love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we bless you today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your peace and your power. We come praying a blessing over those that are listening today. We pray for youth today. We pray, Lord God, for our nation. And Lord, we do. We pray that you would prick our hearts. Lord, even now, reignite the love of Jesus Christ in us. Lord, we know we love you. It's just circumstances and things that are taking place have began to dull our spiritual knife. Lord, we're not able to cut through the strife like we used to. The discouragement, the depression. We're not able to cut through, but your word says that iron sharpens iron. And many people, Lord, we rebuke them feeling guilty about not coming to the church. But we pray in Jesus' name that they would be so convicted, God, by the Holy Ghost. Because, Lord, we come because we love you. So we bless you and we thank you and we magnify you in the most wonderful name of Jesus. We pray and we receive. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. 11 o'clock. Join us. Tell someone that we're having church. God bless you. We love you.